God, in the name of Jesus, we adore your name and glory be to you forever. Yes, we do. It is by your will that we are alive and healthy yeah. and have given us the grace to move, breathe, and have our being. You promise us that whenever we call upon your name, you will answer us with your presence. Come into our midst, Father. Fellowship with us. Visit us with your overwhelming presence and make your blessings abundant in our service today. Lord, you are great. The heavens speak of your glory. Yes. You do wonders in heaven, and we see the signs on earth. Yes. We worship you today. Accept our worship in Jesus' name. We thank you for the means of virtual worship, yes. that we have not forsaken the gathering of ourselves. We have come to fellowship with each other in your presence. So come down, and Lord, let us feel your presence. As we continue with today's service, we want to see your great power move amidst us. Lord, every one of us encounters you in a different way. So we thank you for your promises. You make us understand that whatever we bind on earth is also bind in heaven. We bind every power of the enemy against this gathering. We cast out every evil spirit coming against our coming together in Jesus' name. We pray that today you will meet us at our point of need. We would all be blessed because you have been, we have been in from your presence. So, Father God, bless us this day, this Communion Sunday, that we memorialize what you have done for us. And that you went to the cross and died for our sins. Lord, this is nothing that we have done, but it's all because of your sacrifice that we can boldly come to the throne of grace. We thank you for your precious grace. Father God, we just continue on in this service. Let your presence overshadow us and let blessings all around be our portion. Lord, we ask that as we sit at our tent doors, that you would clear our hearts and our minds. We ask that you eliminate all distractions that would prohibit us from hearing and receiving your word today. That you would bless our musicians, the singers, and the sight and sound crew. And bless our pastor. Father God, we ask that you bless him, guide him, strengthen him, anoint him with your Holy Spirit. Envelop him so that you would give him those words that are for us today. Lord, we love you, we adore you, and we ask all these things in the matchless name of Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Amen.
People should be able to wake us from a deep sleep. And we ought to be able to testify that there is no one, no one like our God. Because indeed, he does miracles that are so great in our lives individually and collectively. And we come to worship because he is a great God. And I know I, I, I did not get up here to do all of that, but that's just where the song leads us. And, and, and where we are in worship, we always ought to have time to acknowledge that he is great. The fact that we got up this morning is evidence of his greatness. The fact that we have breath in our body is evidence of his greatness. The fact that in the midst of this season with so much sickness, that he has made, allowed some of us to get well is evidence of his greatness. Yeah.
right while you're there on Facebook to just write in the in, in the in the chat. There's nobody like him. It's all right to send up a praise to put in those waved up hands in the chat because he is worthy of praising. Even on Facebook, it's worthy of sending out some praise. Amen. And we are grateful to God because not only does God do miracles in our individual lives, but God does miracles for us as a congregation. And we are grateful that a number of years that God sent to us our pastor, the Reverend Michael Ace Dick. And in the fall of the year, because that's actually when we celebrate the anniversary, we celebrate his anniversary and his years of service as pastor. But we also like to recognize that other things happen because we wouldn't be able to celebrate an anniversary if God didn't give him another year of life. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. And so we equally celebrate birthdays because without birthdays, we sort of just aren't around any longer. Uh, I mean, minor little technicality that that might be. And, and so he had a birthday on April 24th. And we would have been doing some things on last week, but God allowed him to be preaching at Beulah. And, and, and while we can do a lot virtually, there's some things we just really can't do completely virtually. Uh, and, and so we started the celebration and had the video, and many of you have seen the video and contributed to the video, and he has expressed his gratitude for the video. But we also wanted to do some in-person, tangible kinds of things. And so this morning, Deacon Costin is going to come on behalf of the church and represent all of us. And then after Deacon Costin, Sister Cole, the ministry leader for the pastor's aid, is going to come and give a gift on behalf of the pastor's aid. And I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, as sure as my name is Marcia Brown Woodard, that others of you are saying we have something. And, and I know that you do. So if you have left it downstairs in the church office, he's going to be getting all of those gifts after service. And if you didn't and you're thinking about it right now, you can get them to the church office this week and he'll get them next Sunday because we are praying that God is going to extend life and he is going to be here next week. So don't be fainting out there in virtual land. Just go ahead and enjoy these moments. Deacon Costin is coming now and then Sister Cole. Well, as Reverend Doctor stated, that this is part two. Part one was when we, uh, after our Bible study, we had a ritual presentation for uh, our pastor, and I thought it went over just beautifully. But uh, this is the second part where we're going to offer our gifts to the pastor, and on behalf of the church's congregation, I'm representing the church's con congregation. The church has given Pastor a $500 gift certificate for Hilton Hotel. Anywhere in the United States that you can use. So for the church, Pastor, we love you. Uh, we appreciate you immensely. Uh, sometimes I don't know how much it is that you mean to us. And you mean a lot to us. So happy birthday, Pastor. Pastor Perry, Sister Carol. We'd like to present to our pastor these gifts. They're monetary gifts, gifts and gift cards. Do whatever you want to do with them. We thank God for sometimes we get weary and we feel as though as people, even pastors, feel as though they're not making an impact with people. But I'm here to let you know that you have made an impact here with us Amen. and the service that you are we are becoming a servant as well. And we thank you for that and we wish you a happy birthday. Amen. We are so glad 
And one of the things you can do if you're on Facebook, you can put some happy birthday wishes right there. He will not, Pastor will not get to see them to after service, but if you're there when he goes back to look at the live stream, he'll be able to see your birthday wishes that are there. We are grateful for his leadership, and again, if your ministry has gifts, you can leave them in the church office and he'll get them next week, or he'll pick them up today if they're already there. Let's continue in worship as Brother Dow leads us further along.
who gives you all the glory, all the honor, Hallelujah. and all the praise. Yes, we come just thanking you for being so precious, yes, so loving, so tender, so caring, so helpful. We come recognizing your grandeur, yes, yes. your majesty. Yes. We come recognizing your honor and your glory. Yes. But we also come to say that we adore you. Yes, Lord. We pay you high homage. Yes, Lord. We recognize your excellency. Hallelujah. Yeah. We recognize your omnipotence and your and your power. Uh -huh. Your omniscience and your knowing everything. Uh -huh. Your omnipresence. You're everywhere all the time. We come recognizing your sovereignty. That you're God and you're God all by yourself. Yes. That you're God and you can do what you want to do when you want to do it. Amen. So we say thank you, Lord. Thank you. thank you. We thank you, dear God, for the praise this morning. We thank you for the prayers this morning. We thank you for the singing this morning. We thank you, Lord, for all that has taken place this morning. We hope that it was pleasing to you and a sweet aroma yes. to your nose, yes. to your nostrils. Thank you. And right, right now, Lord, my personal prayer is that you take me away so that only you can be seen and take away every utterance from my mouth and every thought and from my mind and, and, and every word and syllable from me so that your will and your will alone will be done today. We want to say we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Also, I just want to um, praise God. Let's give God some praise for Barbara. It's also good to see Barbara and have her. Barbara, we want to say thank you. And, and thank you also to Brother Jimmy and to Brother Dow for, for just all that you guys have been doing for us. Amen. I also Amen. want to thank, um, you know, um, um, Pastor Wood and Pastor Perry and, and Deacon Cobb. I mean, it's been a long year and a half, but God has been blessed with them. Our sight and sound ministry. Look at Dre and, and uh, Joshua. And, uh, and as you can see, even right now, there's plexiglass, and we're, we're getting there, and there's something in front of me. Um, so I want to thank Trusty Blunt and, and Brother Vance and others that have done so much to help us get to this, this point in time. We thank God. Isn't God good even in the midst of COVID? We serve a mighty good God. Come on, let's give God a big praise. Let's give God some all the glory. We appreciate him. Amen? Amen. Amen. If you can open up your Bibles to Lamentations, Lamentations, chapter 3, verses 21 through 25. Lamentations. This book, they say, was written by Jeremiah. Lamentations, chapter 3, verses 21 through 25. We're still talking about the faithfulness of God. It says, yet hope returns when I remember this one thing. The Lord's unfailing love and mercy still continue. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Fresh as the morning, mm. as sure as the sunrise, the King James Version says, new every morning his amen. mercies are. And then it says, the Lord is all I have, and, and so in him I put my hope. But the King James Version says it this way, great <laughs> is thy faithfulness. Uh -huh. The Lord, verse 25, is good to everyone who trusts in him. But again, if you look at 21, yet hope returns when I remember this one thing. Amen? You may be seated. Just for a moment, I want to preach from the theme, hope delivered. Hope delivered. Something that many people are searching and looking for today is hope. We all want to have hope. Without hope, life doesn't even seem to be worth living. But we all want hope. And so often, most people understand hope as wishful thinking. How do we know? Because we'll hear this expression or these words, I hope something will happen. And the world wants us to doubt, watch this, and feel hopeless. 
This is not what the Bible means or tells us about hope. The biblical definition of hope, watch this, is confident expectation. Now let me say that again. Confident expectation. I don't know about you, I came here this morning with expectation and anticipation that God is going to do some mighty things. Who's anticipating and expecting God to do some things today? That's what hope is. Hope is confident expectation, not confidence in our money, not confidence in other things, but confidence in our Lord and Savior, Amen. Jesus Christ. Hope, watch this, is a firm assurance regarding things that are unclear and unknown. Romans 8, verses 24 and 25 reminds us, for it was by hope that we were saved. But if we see what we hope for, then it is not really hope. For who, is a, for who of us hopes for something we cannot see? Amen. But if we hope for something that we do not see, we do it with patience. And hope is a fundamental component of the life of the righteous. Without hope, life loses its meaning. Without hope, we can't see our way out. And for some without hope, there's even a tendency to give up. Amen. And some will even see that life doesn't seem worth it. So it's critical where we place our hope. Some place their hope in money only to be let down. Some place their hope in a career mm. only to be let down. Amen. Some put their hope in drugs mm. until the high went away Jesus. only to be let down. Yes. Some put their hope in alcohol mm. and found out that problems can swim yes. <laughs> only to be let down. Amen. Others place their hope in family Again, only to be let down. But those that put their hope in God, watch this, will be helped. Psalm 28 and verse 7 says, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart hoped and trusted in him. And guess what? He delivered. And I am helped. Therefore, my heart rejoices. And with my song will I praise him. He says that hope will not put to shame or disappoint us. Amen. Psalms 34 and verse 45 reads, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed and God delivered. Hope delivered. And I know today, many watching and listening, we're looking for some hope today. Yeah. When we look at a world where there's so much persecution and so much danger and so much hurt and so much injustice, people are looking for hope today. Yeah. Many that are losing their jobs and many that are, are, are in bad health today. You're looking for hope, but you've got to look in the right place. And there are many examples of hope delivered throughout scriptures. For the three Hebrew boys, hope delivered them from a fiery furnace. Somebody ought to say amen. For Daniel, hope delivered him from a lion's den. For Nehemiah, hope helped him build a wall. For Esther, hope delivered and saved the nation. For David, hope delivered and slain a giant. For the woman with a bleeding disorder, hope delivered and cured her. For Elijah, hope was delivered when God fed him through a raven with Mephibosheth. Hope was delivered when he was invited to sit at the king's table. For Moses, hope was delivered. That little baby, when Pharaoh's daughter took him and picked him out of that basket, hope was delivered. And today, I'm here to encourage you that we serve a God that delivers hope, even in the midst of your circumstances and situations. Yeah. He's a hope delivery man. Yeah. 
a hope delivery God. And how about you and me? Someone can say, I was addicted, but hope delivered me. My bank account was low, but hope delivered me. I was sick in the hospital, but hope delivered me and made me well. I lost a loved one, and hope delivered me and gave me peace and comfort. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. And hope delivered. We need to understand that along with faith and love, hope is an enduring virtue of our Christian life. And Colossians chapter 1 and verse 45 tells us that love springs, watch this, come on, love springs from hope. Amen. Hope produces joy Amen. and peace in believers through the power of the Spirit. Yes. And when we hope, watch this, this is key, when we're hoping in God, we're inviting him, come on, listen, we're inviting God to interfere and get involved into our affairs. Come on, somebody else say amen this morning. Amen. When we're hoping, we're saying, God, get involved. Interfere in my life. Interrupt what's going on, Lord. Yeah. When we hope, we're saying, God, we need you to take over this situation. Yeah. We need you there, God, to come in and, and fix this for us. When we're hoping, we're asking God to get involved yeah. and interfere yeah. in our affairs. When we're hoping in God, we're asking him, get involved in our marriages. When we're hoping, we're asking God to get involved and interfere in our personal life. We don't know what we're doing. We don't know where we're going. Our mind is all messed up. Lord, we're hoping in you. Get involved. When we hope, we're asking God to, to get involved with our families, to interfere in our communities, our churches. And Lord, even get involved with us on our jobs. Amen. And in this scripture, Lamentations, written by Jeremiah, you know Jeremiah, the great prophet from a long and distinguished line of priests of Anaboth, a village northeast of Jerusalem. Jeremiah spoke for the Lord during the heartbreaking final days of his beloved nation, Judah. A young, misunderstood, lonely, and sensitive man, Jeremiah has been given the title, the weeping prophet. The word lamentations, it means to lament or to mourn. Lamentation reminds us that there is a time of anguish in a time of suffering. Yes. And many of us have felt that over this last year and a half, it seems to have been a, a time of anguish, yes, Lord. a time of suffering. We couldn't hug each other, and we still can't really hug each other. We couldn't come together and assemble in church physically, but thank God for virtual assembly. We weren't able to eat at some of our restaurants. We, we weren't able to celebrate and do things with our families. We weren't able to visit grandmothers and great-grandmothers, grandfathers and great-grandfathers at the nursing homes. For so many, they were lamenting, they were mourning. Many were passing. And still, we weren't able to be at their bedside because of this. It was a time of lament, a time of mourn. Mm -hmm. Mourning it. This is what Jeremiah. That's right. Is talking about. Yes, that's right. He's lamenting. He's mourning the destruction of Jerusalem. People have been killed. People have been put into captivity. The, the, the city has been destroyed. And he's lamenting. But when you look at verses 1 through 9, what we see is the hand of God. So if you're taking notes, the first point is the hand of God. I'll read it just real quick. I am the one who knows what it is to be punished by God. He drove me deeper and deeper into darkness and beat me again and again with merciless blows. 
He has left my flesh open and raw and has broken my bones. He has shut me in a prison of misery and anguish. He has forced me to live a stagnant darkness of death. He has bound me in chains. I am a prisoner with no hope of escape. I cry aloud for help, but God refuses to listen. I stagger as I walk. Stone walls block me wherever I turn. Some say that Jeremiah is referring to himself, and others are saying he's referring to the whole nation of Israel, the whole nation of Judah, I should say. The sufferings of the people of Judah are described in these first nine verses as as though one man had experienced them, even as Jerusalem was literally, listen to this, besieged. So Jeremiah and countless others felt themselves surrounded by bitterness and woe and slowly strangled by God. They were feeling the hand of God on them. But then when we look at verses 10 through 18, and if you're taking notes, this is the second point. We see the hurt of God and hope deferred. You got that? The hurt of God and hope deferred. So Barb's not on the chapter. Write this down for y'all this week. <laughs> the hurt of God and hope deferred. And let me clarify before we even go any further. My strength and hope has perished. Jeremiah and Jerusalem feel as though they have no strength. You ever been there? Has anybody ever been there? We talked a little about this yesterday during Women's Fellowship. There was so much that the ladies do, our, our, our women, our wives, our, our aunts, our grandmothers. And even right now during this pandemic, so much responsibility. Sometimes you feel as though you have no strength. 
And this is where Jerusalem's at. They believe that God is their adversary. And without God, there's no hope. So this morning, before we even go any further, I simply want to encourage you. We have hope in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Come on, let's get this right now. Amen. He will never leave us, yeah. nor forsake us. He will never disappoint us. He's always there for us. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our hope is in a God who sits high and looks low. Our hope is in a God who loves us better than what we even love ourselves. If someone out there today is hopeless, I'm here to encourage you today. You have some hope today. Hope is alive. Why? Because he got up. Hope is alive. Because he was buried, but he got up. Hope is alive today, y'all. So we saw the hand of God in verses 1 to 9. We saw hope deferred in verses 10 to 18. And now verses 19 to 20. Come on, let's look at it. It says, the thought of my pain, my homelessness, is bitter poison. I think of it constantly, and my spirit is depressed. Mm. But verse 21, let's go there. Yet hope returns, come on now, when I remember this one thing. The next key point, if you're taking notes, is a rising hope Mm. in God. A rising hope in God. It's evident that in the preceding verses, there's a bitterness of complaint against the bitterness of adversity that is not becoming to man under the chastising hand of God. And it gives a feeling of no hope. Mm. But in verses 19, 20, and 21, but now Jeremiah, watch this, come on, is humbling himself under the mighty hand of God and his hope is revived. It may take you and me to humble ourselves to see hope come alive again. It may take you and I humbling ourselves and we know the power of of humility. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God and he shall do what? He shall exalt us in due time. So there was rising hope. And then finally, in verses 21 to 24, we read, yet hope returns. When I remember this one thing, the Lord's unfailing love. Somebody ought to say amen this morning. And his mercies, oh, come on. They still continue. You know what mercy is, right? Grace. We got what we didn't deserve. Come on now. Mercy. Yeah. He held back what we should have gotten. Somebody ought to say amen, amen this morning. Amen. Somebody should have been dead and gone, but yet it was the mercy of God. Somebody should have been locked up a long time ago, but it was the mercy of God. Somebody should have lost their job a long time ago, but it was the mercy of God. Somebody should have been punished for something they did in 1971, but yet the mercy of God took care of you. Come on now. His mercy held back what we should have gotten. I'm so glad when I did something at home and I, my mom said, wait for your daddy to get home. And when he got home, instead of beating me, he showed me mercy. He held back what I should have gotten. I should have been beaten. I should have been on punishment. But if my daddy showed me mercy, aren't you glad that we serve a God that will show us mercy? So in verses 21 to 24, we see hope delivered. We see hope restored. It says, the Lord's unfailing love and mercy still continues. Anybody got the King James Version open? 
Can somebody read that real quick? I don't want to read it again. Which one? The Good News Translation says, Fresh as the morning, as sure as the sunrise. I think the King James Version said, His mercies are what? New? They are new every morning. Every morning. Come on, somebody ought to say amen. The mercies from yesterday. Right. He didn't rehash them. Mm -hmm. But he gave you and me some new mercies today. Yeah. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Because he knew we were going to do something that we shouldn't do. Mm. So he says, my mercies are new every morning. Mm. And then it says, the Lord is all I have. So in him, I put my hope. Yeah. But I think the King James Version says, great, come on now. Is thy faithfulness. Yeah. Great yeah. is yeah. thy faithfulness. Yeah. And that's why our theme is so important. If we can read that great is his faithfulness. If we know that great is his faithfulness. Our, our, our theme says growing in Christ as we do what? Recognize his faithfulness. We know that his faithfulness is great. But do you recognize it when you're down and out? Do you recognize it when things are going well? Do you recognize it when you don't have money? Do you recognize it when you have money? Do you recognize it when you have a job? Do you recognize it when you're jobless? Do you recognize his that is that he is faithful? Yeah. Great. 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 Great is his faithfulness. And then I'm not going to read chapter 5, but if you read chapter 5, it simply says, he still sits high and looks low. Chapter 5 recognizes that he still reigns. So in verses 1 to 9, we learn about the hand of God that was on the people of Judah because of their sin and, and disobedience. That Jerusalem was destroyed. Then in verses 10 to 18, we learned about hope being deferred. We also understood that hope deferred makes the heart grow sick. Yeah. But then 19 to 20, Jeremiah and the people, they, that remnant, there's always a remnant, a, a remnant of people that, that, that stay faithful, a, a remnant of people that So we learned that hope was delivered. Hope was restored. And I tried to close a different way, but I couldn't close any other way but this way. When it came to hope, I said, Lord, can you give me something different? He said, no, I want you to still go with this. But people need to understand they have hope in me. My hope is built on nothing less. Than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but I wholly lean, come on, y'all, on Jesus' name, on Christ, the solid rock I said. Come on, somebody ought to say amen this morning. I said on Christ, the solid rock I said. When things are slippery, I stand on the rock. When things aren't steady, I stand on the rock. When money is funny, I stand on the rock. When, 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 when things just aren't going my way, 
other ground. It's sinking sand. Hope. listening this morning and that's not your testimony, then this is the opportunity you have to allow it to be. For this is the space where you can acknowledge Jesus to be Lord of your life. The place where you can confess that you are a sinner, but because of his shed blood, you have the opportunity for new life. And so we give space that those who have never ever made a a commitment to Christ, that they might want to acknowledge him as Lord, that they may accept him as their Lord and Savior, that they might be just born into the kingdom so they get back in right relationship. But if you do that, you're not able to grow yourself. And you need to be a part of a body of believers that will help you grow from infancy to maturity. And that would be then to make that second step. And to say, I yield to the waters of baptism. I come ready to be baptized. But maybe you're listening this morning. You've already acknowledged. You already are in the kingdom. You even already have been baptized. But right now, you don't have a church home. You've been trying to grow yourself all by yourself. And you need to be part of a community. And so today would be an opportunity for you to come on your Christian experience. To say at some other point in time you were a member of another congregation. But right now, if you would be honest, you would have no membership anywhere. And you feel the Holy Spirit leading you to this branch of Zion. Maybe you almost did that. But you say, the truth is, I used to be a member of Saints Memorial. But I haven't been around even pre-virtual times. For so long that I don't know when I last gathered in the part of the community. And we welcome you back home. It's always good to have you to come back. And you just come as restoration. You just come saying you want to restore your membership. But you can put a note in the chat. You can respond to the email address that's on the screen. You can leave a voice message at the number that's there. Saying that on today, you gave your life to Christ. On today, you make the commitment to be baptized. On today, you're coming on your Christian experience. Or on today, you're coming for restoration. And because there are those who've made those commitments, won't you bow with me for a moment of prayer? God, we thank you for the Holy Spirit touching hearts and lives. And we thank you for the ways in which lives are being changed in this moment. We thank you for giving them the courage to let that be publicly known, whether that's through writing it on Facebook or whether that's through sending an email or whether that's through leaving a voice message. We thank you for giving them that courage that we might join with them on this walk. Bless us now, God, we ask in the name of Jesus the Christ and the people of God who pray together say, Amen. Scripture says that as often as you take of the bread and cup, you should do it unto the Lord. And at Saints Memorial, we do that on the first Sunday of each month. And so we invite you to gather your elements together that you will be ready in a few minutes for us to collectively commune. We know that on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, that on that night, as he had been at table and having a meal, on that night he took up bread and he broke it. And he said, this bread is to remind you that my body will be broken on your behalf. It was the Passover bread that they had seen many times before. But he gave that tradition a new meaning. 
so that when they did it in the future, they would do it with a different understanding. And later in the same meal, he took up the cup. And he said, when you drink this in time to come, remember that my blood was poured out on your behalf. His blood was going to be shed because he indeed was the perfect sacrifice. He was the sacrifice without blemish. We come to this table very grateful that he gave of his life. He allowed his body to be broken. He allowed his blood to be shed. And because of that, we have been given the right to the tree of life. We've been adopted into the family. And so on this morning, we get ready to take of the cup and we get ready to take of the bread. We're gonna ask Pastor Perry if he would pray over the elements as we get ready to commune. Let's bow the word of prayer. Most gracious Father, our Heavenly Father, we truly come before your throne. Thank you, dear Lord, for what took place upon Calvary's cross. And Father God, we thank you, dear Lord, for these elements which are a representation, dear Lord, of your body and your blood, dear Lord, that was given on our behalf. Even now, Father God, we ask that we commune, Father God. Your scripture says that a man examines himself. And in so doing, Father God, in our doing, let us do a spiritual examination. Going up under the guidance of your Holy Scripture, dear Lord, to see if we're in alignment with your word, Father God. And Lord, we ask that you would help us as we confess our sins to you before we indeed take this cup or of this bread, Father God, that we may be clean vessels, Father God, purified and sanctified for this purpose and this purpose alone. So have your will and your way, Father God, as we thank you and bless you for the time we get to spend in communion with you. As long as we keep elements, it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. To the
broken and said, take peace. This is my body broken for you. Let us commune together. And in like manner, he took the cup and said, take drink all of it. This is my blood shed on your behalf. Let us commune together. They had eaten up the bread and drank up the cup. They went out to a, a garden of Gethsemane. We don't have a particular garden to go to, but we surely have a world that needs us to be the light and the salt. So we encourage you to go out and let your light shine, that the world might know that your hope is not in your situation, but your hope has been placed firmly in Jesus, who is the Christ. Go now in God's peace and serve the Lord with joy and gladness. The people of God said, Amen. Amen.